Hello, this is Mark from I Am Energy Organic, and welcome to part two, building soil in a raised wood chip bed. I mentioned at the end of part one that we we're going to talk about building the perfect soil in a raised wood chip bed in part two. So the products we need is a perennial, you can choose your type. Uh, strawberry plants is what I have in front of us right now. I have a dozen of them for each bed. We're gonna space them a foot apart. And that's going to help us build soil for the simple reason that it's a living root constantly all the time. And that would help us with inducing or making sure that we have mycorrhizal fungi available to our plants, which is very, very helpful, and also an aid in building soil. Now you can see here that we have roots growing out the bottom of the containers that we had them growing in. I potted these up a couple weeks ago and had them growing in my greenhouse. Uh, just a low night temperature so they grew and it's growing in just strictly leaf mold. But see those nice white roots on the bottom? What I want them to do now, and this is what mycorrhizal fungi do, and I'm going to give you a basic understanding of what it does, it's just amazing, is that it connects one plant to another plant. About, and I've seen uh, written reports anywhere from 70, 80, or 90 percent of the plants on this planet use mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, to communicate from one plant to another, telling them about pests, telling them about nutrients, telling them about water. So it's very important for our building soil. So I'm going to give you a brief description of how it works. So when you, you see the green growing there, that's our solar panels. That's taking sunshine and pushing it down into the roots and causing sugars to come out. And this plant is sending out a signal to find this fungi, uh, mycorrhizal fungi in the soil to come closer to the roots so it can actually uh, invade the root and grow in there so the plant can be healthier. It's all good. Uh, the plants want this to happen. It's not a, a disease or a problem or anything else wrong with this. Again, about 90% of the plants on this planet use this. Now, sometimes there's spores in the soil, which most likely there are, but right now what we have added in here isn't really soil. It's leaf mold or compost. Now that doesn't usually have it for a simple reason is that it doesn't have a living root in there and there might be very few spores around. There might be some but I'm not going to uh, take a guarantee that there is there so I'm going to induce some later. Now once that spore or living mycorrhizal fungi goes inside that root and starts growing, it starts sending out its own mycorrhizal fungi again. And what it looks like is small strands of almost like cotton. I'm just using this cotton as a demonstration. What you can't see it in the ground, actually you need a magnification about 400 times to see it actually growing off the root hairs or roots itself. But again too, what it does now, it has communicated from one plant to another plant. And plus it reached out into the soil to get more nutrients for the plants, so the plants are going to be healthier, and it's only going to build soil aggregates too, which is going to allow you to store more water and put carbon into the into your soil or soon to be soil, so it's a living soil now. So the white cotton is now our hyphae. That's the root of the mycorrhizal fungi, and now when that goes into the soil and breaks it apart and starts building aggregate, it also releases glomalin and that holds the structure of the soil together and that's very important so now we're building perfect soil. Now everything's working correctly so now we have our bacteria and fungus and we have our nematodes and arthropods working the soil because it's lifting the soil, it's getting air in there, it's allowing water to drain through and, and also it's storing liquid carbon which is more important, I've received a report from a very kind person uh, that stated that carbon or liquid carbon from plants from the green tops up on top to go in the ground is more important than adding leaves or wood chips to your soil. It is more important to have a living root in the ground supplying carbon to the soil to create humus and to store that carbon in the ground than anything else. So about three weeks have gone by. So our, now our compost in the middle, or leaf mold, 
has uh, compacted a little bit and so has our wood chips and you can see it's down below the surface of the rim of the container here of our uh, metal cage so we're going to have to add more but now this is the perfect time to add the strawberry plants in for a simple reason that we don't have to dig so much we're just going to dig a little bit of a hole uh, right between the where the compost or leaf mold meets the wood chips and we're going to place our strawberry plant in there Now I raised it up a little bit because we're going to have to fill up the bed again with wood chips and also some more uh, parent material. And I'll explain further what that is too. Now I'm just going to go around the whole edge, pushing wood chips up as high as the side of the uh, metal cage. And then we're going to put at least a dozen in here, about a foot apart. Now we're going to get some more wood chips and put strawberries in the other bed and then fill the wood chips in and then we're going to fill up the middle with our parent material. And the parent material is what I have on my farm. It's that dark orange clay that we're going to be filling up. We just got done completing both our raised beds with uh, wood chips on the edge, filled up to the top again. And now we're going to be adding our regular soil that we have on the farm. This is not what's in my field. This is on the outside edge of the field. You can see how there is very little organic matter in it and it's basically sand and clay. I know this might be hard to believe, but clay is filled with minerals. The problem is, is that the plant cannot get to it because it needs mycorrhizal fungi available to bring the nutrients from that clay to the plant after breaking it down. I'm just going to add an inch of the time and we're going to put it into the bed here and we're going to add that inch and then mix it in with the leaf mold that we have there and then go back and add another inch and just repeat the process till it's full. Now the reason I'm mixing it is simply because we added, uh, we disturbed the original leaf mold. It's not really soil yet. We really tilled it. And anytime you add something into something, you're tilling it. So you're allowing all oxygen back in and just allowing bacteria to grow. The fungus will start growing now because of the wood chips, but now we have to make soil. And that's what we're doing right now. Just remember, compost is temporary and so is leaf mold. It all eventually decays. Now, you can see here next to my raspberry plants, I have alfalfa growing in my soil. And that's going to be there as long as it receives moisture and it's going to recycle nutrients so it's not going to go away. Because all that green material is capturing sunlight and feeding carbon to the ground. And that's what's going to make all the plants healthy and sustain life on this planet. Now we have it filled up to the top and everything's mixed together. You never want any bare soil in your garden or your raised bed. So what we're going to do now is add some New Zealand white clover. It stays short and it's a legume. Now we're going to cover the whole area with New Zealand white clover. And what it does is it's going to connect all those plants together with that mycorrhizal fungi. And then what it's going also to do is going to lift and aerate that soil so our roots can grow better on our tobacco plants. You don't need a lot, you just need about a handful. Now when you get done planting everything up, just give everything a nice drink of water. And it's always okay to add worms, worm castings, and coffee grounds. Now we're finished up, we watered everything down. Make sure you water it very well after planting your strawberries. Now also too is a crucial point. We want to make sure that we have mycorrhizal fungi available in those plants, so we have to get some in there. And that's very easy to do. We're going to go search for a pine tree. You're looking for any type of tree with needles on it. Now we're going to go to the base of the tree and we're going to just dig out some soil because these trees are highly mycorrhizal fungi available at their roots because they live on it all year long. You're just going to take a handful of soil for each raised bed. Try to get a clump of soil from underneath the pine tree because you're going to break it off to little pieces and just place it around each base of each strawberry plant, about an inch deep. 
So now in the middle, we're gonna plant some sunflower seeds. We're just gonna allow uh, one stalk to grow. We have about three seeds there we're gonna plant, and we're gonna see which ones are strongest and thin them out later on. With that sunflower root, it's going to grow down deep into the middle of it and allow a lot more water and nutrients to come up from the bottom because it's highly mycorrhizal. I wish to thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And please give me a thumb up if you enjoyed the video. And in the next part three, we're going to do uh, sit out irrigation for it and also make a trellis for our tomato plants. I wish to thank you again and enjoy your day.